Hello and welcome to the Hashtag United Awards 2023. I'm delighted to be joined by members of our men's first team, our, men, our women's first team, our coaches, our committee members. We've got some special guests here as well. Uh, round of applause, first of all, everyone here tonight. What a great season. What a great season. This is, of course, a celebration of much more than just the people in the room. It's everyone watching at home on YouTube that's made this journey possible, our partners. Everyone that supports this fantastic football club, we couldn't have done what we've done this year or what we've always done without you guys. Uh, we're here at Fridays in Chelmsford once again for the second year in a row. Uh, we've got to say a big thanks to them, not just for tonight, but for the support they've offered our women's team for the last two years. So a round of applause for Fridays. So we've got a lot to get through as ever. Uh, but first things first, I think the stage is looking a little bit bare. So I'd like to invite our two captains to come up with some very special trophies. Please welcome Lewis Watson and Grace Gillard. Let's go. Yeah, trophies. Come on. Here we go. It looks good, doesn't it? Look at these beautiful trophies. I'm going to have a quick chat. Lewis, starting with you, if that's all right, if you'd like to jump over there. Uh, quickly, if you could just sum up what this season has been like for you as a player and a captain. Ending with that, of course, uh, title and promotion. Um, it's, to be honest, it's hard to put into words, but incredible. The boys have been fantastic from day one. The energy we've put in, trainings, everyone's been there, every game. It's just been an incredible journey, and I couldn't thank the boys more. Are you looking forward to the challenge of uh, step three of non-league, the Ishmael Premier League? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, a new challenge, but I think we'll do very well in there if we, as long as we keep all together. We've got an amazing group of players. Um, and it will be a great challenge for all of us. Fantastic stuff. Lewis, thank you. I'm going to take this trophy off you. Uh, another round of applause for the men's team, what they've done this year. Thank you, Lewis. So, not to be outdone, Grace, you've seen the men win promotion, win the title. A week later, you guys went and secured it against QPR. How good did that feel? Very good, considering what happened last season, being so close. Um, but yet so far, to get it over the line was the main thing, really. It's a decent trophy as well. Dare I say a little bit more impressive than the men's trophy. You've done very well there. Maybe, maybe. Um, what, what was the secret this year to get over the line? What did you see as, as a player? Uh, I think just kind of the group were a lot more together, I think, probably than the previous year. And we, we just played more consistently. Um, and, yeah, we beat more teams than we did last year and won. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Owen. Um, <laughs> and, and, obviously, next year we have Tier 3. Yes. To look forward to. It's a level that you know, the club's been at before, a lot of the players have played at before. What should we expect from that challenge? Um, Jason will probably want to win it, but I think realistically he, we probably just want to um, perform our best and, and probably be at the top end of the table, we're at the business end, but um, it'll be a different sort of challenge. I don't think there'll be the kind of the 16-0 wins we've done occasionally this season, yeah. but um, yeah, it'll make the games a bit more competitive. OK, well, we look forward to it, of course. Uh, before we let you go, Grace, we've got a surprise for you guys, uh, everyone at the women's team, arranged by our friends at LucasAid Sport, who have done something to offer their support for the club, and obviously they've been fantastic supporting the club as well. Let's take a look at this. Hi, guys. I'm Jordan. It's Neve Charles here. Lotta Vibben Moy here. Just want to say a massive congratulations to Hashtag United for an amazing season for the club. Keep up the great work. Big congratulations. If you didn't already know, guys, the work you've been putting in on the pitch is making a lot of noise in men's football and women's football. People are taking note of it. So big thanks to Lucas Aid for arranging that for us and for their support, of course. Grace, I'm going to take that trophy off you, but I want you to stay and help me present the next awards, if that's OK. But uh, we're going to start off with our top assist award for the women's team. Grace, if you'd like to do the honours, please. Absolutely. Right. So in third place, with 24 assists in 30 games and assist every 113 minutes, is Emma Samways. Well done, Emma. In second place, also with 24 assists, but in 24 games, an assist every 78 minutes, was Sammy Rowland. Well done, Sammy. It's impressive. And in first place, with 30 assists in 31 games, an assist every 93 minutes, was Malika. Yay! Yeah. Join me, Malika. Um, Malika, you're the first player in hashtag history to have won both most goals scored in the season and most assists. Back to back, two different years. Not this year, obviously, you weren't top goal scorer, but you won it last year. <laughs> and then you got most assists! That's impressive! This is a compliment! You're the first person in hashtag history to do that. 
what are you putting that down to? I mean, you still scored plenty of goals this year, but why was it that made you see so many more assists come through? Um. <laughs> Sammy scored a lot. Sammy scored a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very bad true. at answering questions, sorry. Well, you're very good at setting up goals, though. Um, tell us about how the season was for you. How did you find it? Very good. Um. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, we're going to get a quick photo. I'll just throw some more Malika stats at you because she's a lady of few words but, but many assists. Um, most assists recorded in, in any non-league season for men or women, which is 30, which is a ridiculous amount of assists. But she also scored 20 goals this season, by the way. It's 50 goals and assists in 31 games, guys. That is unbelievable. Okay. Grace, you're going to stay with me now. Help me do the honours for the men as well. So if you'd like to announce the winner of the most assists, please. Cool. Right. In third place, with 10 assists in 36 games and assists every 175 minutes, was Iman. Whee! In second place, with 13 assists in 32 games and assists every 193 minutes, was Jermaine. Whee! And in first place, with 19 assists in 40 games and assists every 144 minutes, was Toby. <laughs> Toby, Toby, Toby. <sighs> 19 assists, uh, the most any man has recorded in the season for Hashtag. Yeah. How was the season for you? Uh, it, was, it was a good season, you know what I mean? Yeah. We got the promotion and we won the title, so... What more can I say? No, what more can we ask for? Exactly. Um, obviously, you scored the double figures as well, so you're scoring and you're providing. Like, obviously, you played mostly on the right of the attack this year, but have you deliberately added the assist to your game? It's something that we've seen the numbers really jump up this year. Um, I think it was the addition to, from Max Cornhill and Alex Teniola, to be honest. I feel like I've got people that can score now. Where, where are they? <laughs> Max, Max and 18. Yeah. Woo! Well, fantastic stuff. Well done. Uh, well done. Our most assists for the men's team this year, Toby Rover Laren. So, Toby, you're. Yeah. Oh, hold on to that, Peter. Oh, now. thank you. You're staying with me to help us present the top goal scorer awards now. And we're going to start off with the women's award. Okay. Third place with 20 goals in 31 games, a goal every 139 minutes, is Malika. Second place, oh my gosh, with 23 goals in 31 games, a goal every 124 minutes, is Grace Gillard. Woo! From CB. Centre back. From centre back. But first place, 38 goals in 24 games, a goal every 49 minutes, Woo! is Sammy Rowland. Sammy, please join us up here. What an unbelievable season. I'll throw some more stats to you here. Most goals ever recorded in a non-league season at the club. 38 goals, 24 assists as well. That's 62 goals or assists in 24 games. That is a goal contribution every 30 minutes. Ridiculous. <laughs> Incidentally as well, those 24 assists you got would have won you most assists in any other season. It's just Malika when I got 30, so you would have had a double whammy. Uh, I'll let her have it, it's fine. Talk to me about your season. We talked about the minutes there. You didn't even play, you know, you came in after an injury, so you missed a fair amount of games at the start of the season. But once you got going, there was no stopping you. How was it for you? Um, I mean, all round, really good season. I can't really complain. Um, luckily, just got straight into the team and just, just done really well. So, yeah. Sensational season. Um, <laughs> It's also worth saying, guys, there's a very good chance we're going to see Sammy awarded the FA Cup Top Goal Scorer Award at Wembley at the FA Cup final at Hashtag United. That is unbelievable. How special will that moment be? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm buzzing. Um, they're picking me up in a car. We got... <laughs> Grace is coming, Haley's coming, and Sasha's coming as well. So it's going to be a really nice day. I'm really excited. Sammy, well done. We're super proud of you. What a season, Sammy Rowland. Okay, so Sammy is going to stay and help me with the top goal scorer for the men's award now. So if you'd like to go ahead and announce our winner, please, Sammy. 
So in third place with 11 goals in 36 games, uh, a goal every 270 minutes is Max Cornell. Whee! Second place with 14 goals in 32 games, a goal every 179 minutes is Jermaine. Whee! And in first place with 17 goals in 39 games, a goal every 152 minutes is Alex Teniola. Yeah, it's Teniola time! Here he is, his reward. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, thank you. We've got to have a quick chat with Teniola time right here. Yes, uh, yes, yes. What actual time is Teniola time, by the way? What actual time? Yeah, is it 10 o'clock, 3, 3 p.m.? No, nah, So whatever time you score, every right? Every single time, man. <laughs> every always, time? Every, it's always Teniola time. <laughs> Listen, we talked a lot recently about you hitting a landmark, 150 uh, non-league goals. How important and how special was it for you to do it this season in a title-winning season at Hashtag? I think it was um, overwhelming, to be fair. It was a lot, a lot of emotion, a lot of... A lot to achieve in one season and to do it in that manner as well and with this group of boys and at this club as well, you know, with the management team, yourself, everybody, it's just, it's just been sick, to be fair, it's been sick. Honestly, Love to hear it. Put into words, to and then honest. both our top goal scorers this year, obviously new players to the club, yeah. you know, it, do, it doesn't always happen right away, you've got to get to know your new teammates and yeah. gel. How was the sort of process of joining Hashtag for you? Oh, it, was, it, was, it was a lot, like, in the beginning, obviously, I think when I first come in, um, it was a bit difficult to kind of gel because I had come off the back of like playing Saturdays and Sundays. So yeah. my body took a, it took me a long time to get into it, get into it. But as I got into it with these boys as well, pushing me and devs and everyone, it was sick, 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 sick towards the end of it. Fantastic season. Alex Tenyon, everybody, well done. Quick focus. Okay, just a couple of stats I'm going to throw at you before we move on to the next award. And to show you how big the spread of goals was this year on the men's side, both Pedro Carvalho and Toby Aram Laren scored enough goals to win that award last year, which is 10 goals. That, last year, that award was won with 10 goals. So that's how many different goal scorers we had. They neither fe uh, featured the top three this time out. OK, moving on, we're going to be awarded. We just uh, obviously saw two new signings, as I mentioned. The next award is for the best new signing at Hashtag United. This is voted by our YouTube members. Of course, we love and appreciate you members. Uh, extra support helps us do what we do. So thanks to you and thanks to you for voting. To help present this, uh, someone we actually signed through the Hashtag Academy process, although not necessarily for footballing reasons. He does play football for us, though. <laughs> he plays in the reserves. He works in our social media. You've heard him commentating. He's producing. He's making unbelievable graphics. Of course, I'm talking about Eddie Cooper. Get on down here. <laughs> That's a very big round of applause. Say that, that was good. Um, Eddie, before we let you present this award, first thing first, we're talking about things we've won. We've got a cup final to look forward to in the reserves now, haven't we? Yes, man. Yeah, cup final coming up, so make sure you're all there. 20th of May, 4pm, Parkside. There you go. Looking forward to it. Come on, make sure. Come on, the sure. Rezies. Also, shout out to our Sunday team. We're playing a cup final right now in Bre uh, Brentwood Town against Great Danes. Hopefully that's going well. Actually, it's probably finished now. We should probably find out the score. Um, right, Eddie... We are doing the best new signing, uh, starting off with best new signing for the women. As I mentioned, this was a fan-voted award. Would you like to reveal the winners, please? Of course. It would be my pleasure. Let's go. In third, with 5.6% of the vote, Maisie Garwood. Uh, and in second, with 12.8% of the vote, is Jamie Lee Bamford. Good jam, Bam. But in first place, with over half the votes, 56.8%, it's Sammy Rowland. She's back! I'm going to ask you the same question I asked AT, obviously, um, coming into the club, especially not getting to start the season due to injury. How was that process for you, getting into that team? Mm, I mean, it, it was hard to get back into the team. Um, just trying to get my fitness up is probably the main thing for me. Um, but yeah, Jason just gave me a chance and like the rest of the coaching staff. So and I just sort of just took the opportunity and just straight away started scoring goals. So. Scoring a lot of goals, guys. Yeah. Fantastic. Not just the top goal scorer, but also the best new signing as voted for the fans. Sammy Rowland, everybody. Uh, it's worth reminding everyone as well, this, this, this uh, category, you have to have joined this season and you have to have not played for the club before as well. That's one of the rules to, uh, for the vote. Right, best new signing for the men, please, Eddie. Of course. Uh, this one was really, really close. 3% separating the top three players. Uh, in third place, with 21.8% of the vote, is Greg Halford. Greggy. 
Big man. Uh, in second, it's 22.2% uh, of the vote, PK Humble. Ooh, PK. But first, with 24.8% of the vote, Max Cornhill. Yeah. Big man. Max Cornell, I've got a few questions for you. Uh, first of all, this is the fan-voted award, obviously. Um, we're a special club with a lot of fans all over the world. How's that been for you, coming into this club and experiencing that and now winning an award thanks to them? Uh, if I'm going to be honest, I didn't think I'd really get it. A bit old, but... <laughs> and they're all youngsters, but... No, I'll take that one. Thank you. Jeez. We could rename it the best old signing, if you'd prefer. <laughs> I'll take that. If you say you're old, but you've come in and you've added a serious quality to this team, a massive part of us, obviously, getting that promotion to a level you're more than familiar with, you're familiar with levels higher than that as well. What do you think we've got to do to adjust next season? Um, I don't think you have to do much, really. If you look at Avely and Canby, keep the same squad, keep pushing on, and I think you'll be fine. Last question for you. You've played at a lot of big clubs. You've, you've played at high levels, we mentioned. What has it been like for you adjusting to hashtag? And, you, know, you never know what to expect, I guess, probably coming from the outside in. How have you found it? No, I think I said that in an interview before. It's completely different. When you look at the inside, it's a bit of a media circus. But when you actually sign, you realise it's actually a footballing club and everything's brilliant. So, Fantastic stuff. Max Cordial, the best new signing for the men's team. Right, next award. We're moving on to the Fan of the Year. We get to uh, reward one of our fans. We'd love to uh, reward all of them, of course. We've got fantastic fans in person at the game, online, everywhere. We love it. It's always a very hard decision. Um, so thanks to every fan that's watching this for your support. It really does mean a lot to us. Um, this usually goes to someone who's gone above and beyond in their support. And it's, uh, it's decided by the senior committee, so internal decision, to present this award with last year's winner. So please join me in welcoming Lucy Copsey. <laughs> okay, so Lucy, um, everyone should be familiar with the role you play for the, the club, not just last season, but this season, of course, taking photos of pretty much every hashtag <laughs> United team, going to so many different games. How has it been for you this season getting ex experience such a winning side on both sides? I mean, it's as fans and as a photographer, it's been, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better year. It's been practically no low moments at any, almost any point in the season. Both teams win the league. You really can't ask for any more as a fan. And yeah, for me, Doing my photography, it's been made the experience even better for me. So it's been awesome. Great stuff. Also, shout out to Nashi who's taking the photos tonight. He's taken a hell of a lot of photos this year. He's made a lot of you look very good. Okay. So, uh, Lucy, if you could please do the pleasure of opening that envelope and let us know who's won the Fan of the Year award this year. So, the Fan of the Year. 100% attendance at women's games this season, and a very strong men's games as well, is Matthew Napier. Yay! <laughs> Matt, um, first things are first, I've got to say, I disqualified you from winning this last year because of the whole Romford thing. If you don't know about the Romford thing, <laughs> Matt wore a half and half scarf because he's from the town of Romford. Even though he'd never watched a Romford game in his life, he said he was very torn. He eventually made the right decision, destroyed the scarf, I believe, and now you're back on 100% hashtag. So we had to give him the award. <laughs> Thank you. And the, uh, the truth is, Matt, it's not just this season, is it? You've been with us since we went into non-league. You know, the, the commitment you've shown... Pretty much every game, I know 100% women uh, record on the women this year, but across the men's as well. What's the journey been like for you the last uh, few years? I mean, hashtag really changed my life because before hashtag, I don't go to a normally game at all. And then when hashtag happened because of you, and I, oh, it's not too far for me, like an hour and a half to get there. And I instantly love it. Lonely football, everything about hashtag. And then since then, Five years later, here I am, finally. You know, he got the award. <laughs> He's waiting for it. He's earned it. He's put the hard work in. Well done, Matt Napier. Matt, yeah, quick... Thank you so much, Rio. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Hour and a half, by the way. Okay. Next award's a big one. Uh, we're moving on to the Fans Player of the Year category. Again, voted for by our fans, um, very important one to win. To present the award, we're welcoming last year's winner of the Men's Fans Player of the Year, 
Harry Haysom. Okay, Harry, quick chat with you before we start. Yeah. Uh, How has the season been for you? Obviously, you've had a couple of injury issues that have kept yeah. you out of a decent amount of the games, but you finished strong, back in the side. How have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a niche season for me, to be honest. Uh, not not playing many games, obviously playing all of last season, but. Yeah, the boys got over the line and done the job for me, so can't complain too much. Interesting fact about Harry. So, in the men's team, there's a record for the most consecutive games played, right? I don't like to talk about it, but it's held by me, okay? 50, and I did pick the team, so I don't really deserve much credit for that. But it was 53 games. Harry got to 53 games. It was the FA Cup game, I think, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Basically, he got injured in that game, so he yeah. ended up not beating it, which I was... Obviously devastated to see you get injured, but there was a little part of me that was quite happy. Um, but obviously that showed how many games you'd played all of last season once you got in the side and most of this season until, until the injury came in. But it has been a fantastic season. Are you ready and raring to go for another one next year? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Good man. 100%. Okay. Right. Let's start off with the uh, Women's Fans Player of the Year award, please. All right. So in third place with 11.5% of the vote, Emma Samways. Emma. In second place with 20.1% of the vote, Sammy Rowland. And in first place with 28.6% of the vote, Grace Gillard. Well Skip. Uh, Grace, I've got to talk to you about the fact that you scored 23 goals from centre back. By the way, before you get the stats out, only seven of those were penalties. It's only seven. She scored what's that, 16 goals from open play, or free kicks, open plays, whatever. Uh, ten assists as well, by the way. So double figures, goals and assists from centre-back. Can we give a round of applause for those stats? <laughs> I've already talked to you about the season, but we've got to talk to you about those statistics. Like, surely it's the best season you've ever had in front of goal. Oh, by a mile. Like, I think I've scored more this season than I have in my entire career. And what are you putting that down to? Um... Jason's tactics of one at the back kind of helps. Um, we're told to just attack and don't and worry about defending later, basically. Um, and yeah, I don't know, just, um, I mean, we attack for most of the game, so corners and stuff like that, just been up there a bit more. But um, I don't know, I don't think I'll ever do it again. But well, I'll never say are. never. It's an unbelievable <laughs> amount of goals. And I've got to say, I mean, this is no disrespect to the opposition QPR whatsoever, right? But... For me, I've got to tell you, watching on, pinch yourself moment, this team we created on YouTube seven years ago, watching our manager put our centre-back up front against Queen's Park Rangers, because we've already won the league, and then she goes and scores a goal as well. That's an unbelievable moment. Uh, Grace Gillard, congratulations. A word to the fans to, who voted for you. Uh, thank you very much. I didn't really expect this, so thank you. Well done. Seven of a photo. So... Before we move on to the men's award, a uh, quick shout out to our partners, Socios. Uh, fan token holders got to vote for their very own player of the year. This isn't the official player of the year, but it is an interesting vote nonetheless. Um, the winner of that vote, by the way, was Pedro Carvalho, who won the Socios fan token holders. So it's not the actual one. Don't get out of your seat yet, Pedro. Stay over but it's still there. very Stay good. Over. Well done. We've got a little prize for you, actually. Um, but this is the official vote that's voted for by our members once again. And Harry has the stats in his hand right there. So, fourth place with 5.6% of the vote, Toby Aroma Laren. <laughs> Joint second, shared with 6.8% of the vote, father and son duo, Matt and Max. Hey, <laughs> May Waldridge and Max Cornhill. <laughs> and pretty much by a landslide, first place. Starboy himself with 66.2% of the vote. He's already walking He's up. He's already coming up. <laughs> Come Jermaine <on>. Francis. <laughs> Jermaine Francis, huge margin of victory there. Obviously very popular with the fans. Have you got a message for the fans who voted for you? Thank you very much. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, we're not done yet. I've got another question for you. Uh, Jermaine, we, we talked to Harry about obviously missing a fair bit of the season for injury. You were probably a bit frustrated at times at having to be watching from the sidelines. Yeah. But particularly when you got back in the side at the start of the year, the run you went on, I honestly don't think we've seen it in the men's team, a sort of purple patch like that. The amount of goals you scored, the amount of assists you got. What are you putting that down to? Just hard work beats talent, really. That's it. Really. 
I love it. I love it. Uh, Jermaine Francis in the Malika of India mould oh, in terms it. of public speaking. Um, but a fantastic player, just like Malika. Well done. Fans Player of the Year. Shot me, Wala. Thank you, Jermaine Francis, everybody. Right, now it's time, uh, maybe for one of the most anticipated awards of the night. It's Goal of the Season Award. We call this the Charlie Morley Award. He's the only person that's won it twice. Uh, hashtag. Uh, last year's winner was Sam Bantic. Uh, recently, we saw West Ham players <laughs> try and recreate that goal. Uh, this award is sponsored by our friends at UFL. Obviously, men's shirt sponsor. We'd like to thank them massively for their support. Right. To help me present the award for goal of the season is a man who has scored a very impressive one goal for the Tags. Um, he's had three years out injured, but then he's turned into a goal machine this year for Whitton, by the way. Please welcome for Isingano. We've got to, obviously, if there's anyone that's not familiar with the story for our, we, we got him in very early in the uh, first years of non-league. He came in, he helped us win that first promotion, that second promotion, then suffered a pretty nasty AS, uh, AS, uh, ACL injury. <laughs> ASL, sign language. Um, he suffered a bad ACL injury, but he's back. He's been playing with Whittam this year. Yeah. We're very much looking forward to seeing you soon. You've since turned into a prime drug bar. I've seen the clip. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And uh, you're coming with us in June to TST. You've got to be looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm excited. It was a bit of a shock, to be honest, because obviously I haven't, in, I haven't been involved really at all. Um, but obviously, when I got the WhatsApp call from you, I said, yeah, I'm ready. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Okay, time to get on to the award. Again, big thanks to UFL, because the winners of Goal of the Season are getting their goal designed and framed uh, by Goal of Fame. So uh, you can take a look at their work in the description below, by the way. Shout out to the Goal of Fame guys. Also, the winners of this award are going to get two VIP tickets, courtesy of UFL, to West Ham versus Man United. Yes. See a big win for the Hammers, hopefully. So, this one was voted for by the fans. Farai, can you please read out? This is the Women's Award first. Yep, sure thing. Okay, so in third place, with 8% of the votes, is Sammy Rowland's second against Watford. Sammy Rowland's second goal against Watford. Okay, third position. All right, in second position, with 9% of the vote, is Sammy Rowland again, first <laughs> against Watford. Same game against <laughs> Watford. What a game. And then in first place with 54 of the vote is Hayley West against QPR. Hayley, 54% of a vote, and there was 10 goals to choose from in that as well. How do you feel? What do you say to the fans who voted for you? Uh, do you know what? Thank you so much. But honestly, that goal, uh, and so many goals have gone in this season for the club, but that goal really was a team goal. But it just, it was, it, it, it so happened. <laughs> it so happened I was on the end of it. So I'll take that. It was I'll a great goal. Tickets. Yeah, the build up was fantastic. But also, it was a goal in a game that won us the league as well, which I think is another massive reason for it. Do you remember that? We won the league. Do you remember that? Isn't that fun? Uh, and it's, it's also confirmation that you have really turned into a goal scorer this year, Hayley. Yeah, well, you know, Wayne put a bit of uh, oomph into my game. <laughs> serious, serious oomph. Uh, fantastic stuff. Okay, thank you, Hayley. Well done. We'll have a quick photo. Hayley West, goal of the season. Okay, so next up, we're doing the goal of the season for the men. Another uh, 10 options for this one, voted for by the fans. Let us have it, fans. Cool. In third place, with 9% of the votes, is Iman Akunja against Grace. Great goal. Great goal. And then in second place with 26 of the vote is Jermaine Francis against Tilbury. Oh, it's a good goal, that. What's beating it? What's beating that goal? And not surprisingly, in first place with 35% of the vote is PK against Whitham. Oh, it's a Mariadonna. A bit of Mariadonna. PK couldn't be here tonight. Um, I, I thought, though, I'd like to invite anyone that wants to come up and have an opportunity to basically rib PK, because he's been taking the piss out of a lot of players this year. So I'm in my AT or E-man. If you'd like to come up, the floor is yours. Say whatever you like about him. You can take that, you can take that on his behalf. Yeah, thank you. What would you like to... Uh, here, tell us about PK, guys. That what guy, sort of player is that he? That guy is um, he's a, he's a national treasure. 
our team. Yeah, he is something special. 100%. <laughs> and how can you... He flew out yesterday, I think it was. Why can't you just wait till the next day? Look, you're poor. That's poor. Wow. That's poor. Poor from you. Sums, Everyone's here. Sums him up in sums training up and all, man. Exactly. He doesn't put the effort in. <laughs> Stinks up the Somehow thing, he man. does that. I don't know. De- <laughs> Devs, you know what? You, I don't know how you've done it this year. Fair with him, but you, you're, you're one of a kind. Yeah, you, I think you should. I think, I'm get, we're going to give this to Devs <laughs> for dealing with you the whole season. No, what, do you, you remember the goal though, right? Yeah, great goal. Amazing. I, f- I think I got the assist for that, didn't I? Yeah. It was a throw-in, I think. It was a throw-in. <laughs> throw-in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was all you. It was all in the assist. It was. I see him. Uh, no, it was no, actually no. a goal that Jared Bowen tried to recreate recently. We did a video of West Ham and he struggled with it. Um, but it's a kind of... You can't really recreate that sort no, of goal, can you? No, nah, it was a moment of genius, to be yeah. fair. He'd he done well, found himself in a good position, beat his man and uh, slotted it. You both had goals that were nominated. Obviously, you finished third for your goal against Grays. AT had a great goal in there as well. A couple of goals, I think, actually, against Grays and against Coggeshall. So, fantastic stuff, guys. Thanks for accepting that on his behalf. We'll have a quick photo just for fun. Next up is the club's Best Young Player Award. To win this award, you have to be 21 or younger when the season started. Um, Before we announce the winners of this, I do want to shout out to all our youth players, our coaches, our volunteers, our parents. Yeah, indeed, we've got over 400 players now at the club. Uh, We're playing with over 40 teams from under fives all the way to adult football, to walking football. Uh, We've been accredited three stars by England Football, which is a credit to everyone at the club for creating that pathway from youth to senior football. And, as you would have seen at the uh, women's final game, we've recently had success in the youth section. Our under-13 girls won the Junior Premier League at the first time of asking. And we've got a load of cup finals coming up. So, shout out to all our young players. Now, to help me present this one is the one and only Alexandro Shipshack. Okay. Alex, first off, we're going to award the best young player for the women's team. This award is chosen by the managers. This is chosen by Jason Stevens. Okay. So, as a reminder, who won it last year? We, it was Sophie Kelly. And, <laughs> and uh, it's a first time in hashtag history that we've got a back-to-back winner for this award because the winner this year is Sophie Kelly. Yay! Sophie, I know you're a very popular player and obviously popular with the management. Second time in, in, in a year, two, two years in a row, sorry, I've picked you for this award. How has this season been for you? I mean, I think... Come nice and clear. On the back of last year, I think we just wanted to bounce back and I think we couldn't have done any better for ourselves, really, yeah. It's been great, hasn't it? I will warn you, Sophie, this was the last year you could win it. So you okay. cannot win it next year, yeah. but you've smashed it, you've dominated it. It's pretty much the Sophie Kelly Award at this point. So well done, Sophie! Thank you. So, now it's time for the Men's Best Young Player Award. Alex, would you like to know? let us know who's got it? Yes, and you're not going to believe this, but for the second time in hashtag history... <laughs> As of about a minute ago. We, uh, we've got another back-to-back winner. It's Mr. Matthew Waldridge. Whee! <laughs> Matty... Two years in a row. Yep. You're the best young player officially. Again, you can't win it next year though. So well, it, it, stamp you'll be too old. Was starting at 21. Yeah, you're not. The season. How I'm, old are you? I'll be 21 at the start of the season. Oh, so maybe you could win three times the three, Pete. Surely not. Uh, is that the goal for next season? Uh, no. I want, <laughs> I, want it, I want it all next year. Well, he's going to win it all. I want it all. How's this season been for you? You came into the club last season off the back of the Academy series. Yep. Uh, it didn't take you long to, to cement your place in the team. Played a heck of a lot of games, and you're right up there now for most appearances, actually. I think you're fourth or fifth all time yeah. for the men. Um, how's this season been for you? Uh, this season's been a lot better, obviously, winning it all. But in terms of my actual self, I don't think I've actually done that much. Well, you've played it. Fair this year. You've played right I, back, you've played left back, you've yeah, scored goals. I ain't, done, I ain't done a lot, to be fair. Modest as ever. I ain't done a lot. This year's best young player, Matthew Waldridge, everybody. <laughs> Next up is the Hashtag Hero Award. Okay, this award is chosen by staff and committee, and it's to reward someone within the club who we feel has gone above and beyond in their service to the club. Um, 
The thing is, though, we have so many people that go above and beyond every year. It gets harder to award this one every year, particularly as the club gets bigger and bigger. Um, and, and we rely more, quite frankly, on our amazing volunteers. Uh, so this is, you know, for, again, for everyone that helps us out. We have to give it to someone, but thank you to every single person that helps us, from committee to youth coaches to match day helpers. It's huge, and it, honestly, the club wouldn't work without you. So it's just a clap for all our volunteers. Now, full disclosure, uh, we've actually decided that we get so much help now, we've got to give this award to two people this year. Uh, so we're, we're having two people come up. But to help us give it out, uh, we want to have last year's winner of the award, Alex Bayliss. Um, before, before we get our winners out, I do want to talk to you about your journey, obviously. Former women's captain, turned blogger, turned influencer, turned presenter, turned editor, turned social media guru. Um, how's your journey been? And tell us about some of the things you've been up to this year. Uh, yeah, it's been really exciting. I mean, for me, I never would have got into this if I hadn't been at Hashtag at the time. And actually, that first training session that I went to where I couldn't join in, Stampy and LP came and spoke to me and said, this might actually be the best timing ever because now you've got this new opportunity to do this. And I never really thought anything would come of it, but then the Euros happened, and I did a bit of filming there, and then that's been in a documentary, and I've had lots of other opportunities since then, and I'm going to the Champions League final. Yeah. Not the World Cup yet, though. Unless anyone wants to take me to Australia. If you're watching, she'd love yeah, to go to the Women's on. World Cup. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been really exciting, and I'm just still happy to be a part of the club. So. We're very happy to have you. I know you're very modest, but listen, none of that stuff would have happened if you hadn't have grasped the opportunity and put that work in. And I know from experience, you know, working a full-time job and then going and editing those videos, which, the amount of goals these girls score isn't easy. Yeah. So yeah. a round of applause for the hard work of Alex Bailey. <laughs> okay. Can you please reveal the first winner of this year's Hashtag Hero Award? Okay. From one hero to another... Is that, is that the second name? It is Manj Key. Yay, Manj, let's go! Oh. Manj is coming, she's here, I've seen her. She's here. Where is she? While she's on her way here, if you don't know about Manj, it means you probably haven't come to a game, because Manj is on the gate oh, at men's yeah. games, she's on the gate at women's games these days. Uh, she's helped out way beyond that, she's helped out with the youth welfare team. She makes cakes for the bake sales. Uh, honestly, she's, she's selling merch for us. She does everything. She's part of the prestigious Keith family, of course, which have got ties up and down the club. Joe Keith, Albie Keith, Manj Keith, the first winner in the Keith family of the Hashtag Hero Award. Here she is. Man, I was just, uh, hopefully people heard what I was saying there as you came up, but you've been with us since the beginning of non-league. You, obviously, we, we got to know you through Albie Keith and then Joe Keith obviously being involved. But you've really fallen in love with the club. I think we've fallen in love with you for sure. You've been such an amazing help. And, I mean, first I've got to ask you, why do you do it? Why do you help us so much? It's easier oh, than my day job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone that comes to a game has seen Manj at some point. She's always there. She's so reliable. Again, we couldn't do it without her. So hopefully you take this, uh, this sort of, uh, of our notice of our appreciation for everything you do, Manj. So Manj Keith, everybody! <laughs> As I mentioned, there's two winners this year. We couldn't choose between them, so we've decided to make them both heroes. Alex, could you reveal the second winner? Hero number two is Greg Edwards. Yes, Greg Edwards! What a shirt as well. What a shirt. Right, Greg. Again, if you don't know Greg, you must have not come to a game for the last few years because he, he, you know, he's, he's such a character. He's joined us a couple of years ago. He gets stuck into absolutely anything we ask him to do, quite frankly. Um, he's done commentary for the men's reserves, the women's games, a lot. He's been a match steward. He's been a standing kit man. He's been an announcer. He's done everything and meant much more than that, to be honest. Um, player, player herder. Player herder, exactly. Um, how have you found it getting involved with Hashtag last few years, mate? Right, without me crying. <laughs> <laughs> That'll, st that, that'll stop it. It's been 
a hell of a ride, and it's not stopping. 100%. I've said this to you, I've said it to Neil, I've said it to a lot of people, this club has saved my life. On two occasions. Greg Edwards, everybody, what a man! Right, normally at this point we would announce our eSports Player of the Year. Now, if you don't know, it's a bit of a foregone conclusion this year as we've got one player. Um, so, he, yeah, he's done it. And he's also been our best and worst player, technically. He's just the only player. Um, but he's been fantastic, in fairness. So please welcome, hashtag Stokes, Tom Stokes. So, I mean, again, if you don't know about the wider stuff this club gets on with, and, and particularly what Tom has achieved this year, I'm going to tell you a little bit. We talked about how our uh, young girls were in the JPL. This man won the EPL, right? That is the Esports Premier League. He's representing Leeds United, very controversially as a Man United fan. But he's representing Leeds and Hashtag, of course. Uh, tell me about that. I mean, what an amazing achievement. Yeah, no, um... Obviously, it's just the virtual version of the actual Premier League. You have to pick a team. Um, I, I'm a United fan, yeah. I did pick Leeds. Hopefully, they stay up because uh, I want to go again next year. But, yeah, um, managed to win it. Um, really good for the end of the season. Got some nice stuff coming up. So, yeah, very good, very good. Amazing achievement. Seriously, seriously impressive stuff. You're also uh, in the playoffs, of course, to compete yeah. and then hopefully qualify for the big FIFA E World Cup at the end of the year. I mean, it's, it's a tournament you've won before, yeah. previously. Again, I, I can't iterate enough, for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, competitive FIFA, how good this guy is at what he does. You know, like we talk about people that are in the top, you know, the Premier League, for example. And the top, this guy's in like the top 0.0001% of FIFA players, beating anyone in the world on his, on his day. It's, it's an, I'll use this word, he's an elite athlete, guys, right? So you can all learn from this man. The commitment he puts in is unbelievable. The work rate he puts in is a joke. Streaming, practicing. What are you looking forward to in the playoffs? Like, what's, your, what's your goal from that? Um, just get to the World Cup, that's it. Get to the World Cup. I don't really care how, just get there. Okay. Yeah. We hope you do it, mate. Best of luck to Hashtag Stokes. Well done, my friend. We're getting to the business end of things now, so I've got to welcome the business man. Sebi Roy, would you like to join me? Help me do this next award. Thank you, brother. Um, so we're talking about business. Let's talk about Jordan business. Forte. That's what we're talking about. Um, we've just had an amazing season, but business time is coming up. We could win a, we could win a million dollars in a few weeks. That would be good business. That would be very good for business, wouldn't it? Eh? You all after a raise, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true, actually. I haven't thought that. A um, lot of pressure on the boys that have been selected for that, of course. But it's an amazing thing to be part of TST. Yeah, it's going to be unbelievable. Like, literally, some of the names in that, you're talking about people that have won World Cups, yeah. Champions Leagues, literally as good as it gets, really. And a million dollars on the line is going to be very exciting. Yeah, no really pressure. Getting, getting to mix it with the best. The groups just came out today. Make sure you're following all the stuff you want to Most see. Most importantly, I'm looking on. forward to see Devs go managerially against Tom Skinner. Tom Skinner of West Ham, Mia Ham, Mia Ham, World Cup winner, is managing the US women's national team at this tournament, by the way. He's got a lot of World Cup winners there, so devs, no, no pressure, mate. Um, okay, uh, we also want to take this opportunity to thank our partners this year, don't we? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, from UFL, LucasAid Sports, um, of course, Socios, and our host tonight, Fridays. We literally can't make the club what it is without those guys' support, so thank you very much again, and lots more to come in the future. Yeah, a round of applause for our partners, guys. Really? Thank you, partners. These awards are getting really juicy now, Sebi. I'm going to give you that. And could you please uh, reveal who won the vote from the players, for the players' player, starting off with the women's team, please. Okay, so players' player. In third place, we have Sophie Kelly. Sophie! Second place, we have Hayley West. Let's go, Hayley! And in first place... Grace Gillard. Yay! She's coming up again. Well done, Grace. Welcome back. Welcome back. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I'm running out of things to ask you, Grace. You've been up here so much. But first thing I'm going to ask you is how important is this one to be voted for by your fellow players? Yeah, I mean, it's the girls we, I train with week in, week out and play with. So, um, yeah, it's a bit more special when it's from from the girls you're with all the time. So yeah, so thank you girls. Thank, thank you. you. Um, one other thing I want to talk to you about, I spoke earlier about this, this club record appearances thing that 
uh, Harry was trying to take my record down for. The reality is, you've already taken that record, by the way. The most appearances anyone's ever made back to back for any team of hashtag. This young lady here has it and is still on it. It's 63 games in a row. She also played every minute this season, and she would have played every minute last season if it wasn't for a red card she got in the game. Sticky one. So it would have been way more than 63 games if it wasn't for that red, but that's, I mean, I know you, it's an impressive stat. Can we just clap that stat? 63 games in a row, every minute. What do you put that down to? Like, how do you stay injury free? How do you stay in that team? I don't know. Um, I've just been lucky with injuries, I guess, as in not having any. And um, yeah, just each week I've been available and Jason's backed me to play, so I've played. Unbelievable achievement. Um, while you're here as well, I do want to give you one more thing. She loves making records, this girl. The first woman ever to hit 100 appearances for Hashtag United. Here is a plaque to commemorate. I want to see 200 minimum. <laughs> right, no fun time. On to the Men's Players Player of the Year Award. Seb, would you like to reveal the top three? Players Player for the Men, yeah? Okay, so, Players Player for the Men in third place, Matthew Waldridge. <laughs> Second place, Jermaine Francis. In first place, player's player, voted poor, vote for, by his peers, Max Cornhill. <laughs> Max, we've already seen you winning best new signing, voted for by the fans. This one's voted for by your players. What does it mean to you? Uh, probably out of all of them, this one probably means the most. Voted by all the boys the people that respect you, so cheers boys. Yeah, Thank amazing. You. In a season of unbelievable performances, anyone could have won it, but this man's got it, he deserves it. Thanks for him. Now, it's time for the Manager's Player of the Year Awards. Um, I've got to obviously welcome up the managers to award this one, so starting off from the women's team, Jason Stevens, please join me. Our promotion winning manager, our title winning manager, Jason Stevens. Okay, before I ask you to reveal your winner, Jason, I've got to have a quick chat with you about the season. It's been unbelievable, hasn't it? It's been yeah, fantastic. it's not been bad, has it? It's been pretty good. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the disappointment of last year, there was only one direction we was going to go, and that was one better. So I'm just really pleased that the girls have pushed us, they've pushed each other, they've pushed the club forward. And we've achieved what I think we ultimately deserved. So, 100%. You know. and statistically, I've got all the numbers. It's, it's genuinely the best season in history in terms of win percentage, in terms of goals scored, in terms of goal difference. All those stats, it's an unbelievable year. You, know, you didn't even have to win it in the style you did, but you've, you've gone and absolutely finished the job. And a really good FA Cup run that brought in some very important prize money for the club. So a round of applause for the women's yeah. team once again. Thanks, and for Jason. Thank you. And all your coaching staff, of course. Absolutely. Um, okay. Quickly, before we uh, reveal it, next season as well, what are you thinking? You, you know, tier three, it's a different challenge, right? Yeah, just first of all, I've got to make sure Grace ups our ambitions, yeah, because we are going to try and win it. <laughs> <laughs> some serious teams, some yeah. professional teams. We've played a few and had good results against them this year uh, as well. Absolutely. So. Look, we're not a million miles away, all right? But realistically, I get it. But let's give it a go, right? Let's make a noise, see what happens. It's what we do. It's what we do. Come on. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, Manager's Player of the Year, chosen by you, of course. Last year's winner was Emma Samways. Can you please reveal this year's winner to us and tell us, first of all, why you've chosen this player? Yeah, but before I do that, I just want to say to all the girls, listen, this is a really, really hard choice. Yes, I've got this nerdy spreadsheet that does all these numbers and stuff and bits and pieces, um, but at the same time, there's been probably five or six ladies that have been right up there and I would love to go you know mention some names so Kat I think you've been absolutely fantastic Woo! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hang on you're still talking absolutely we've got <laughs> Malika all those goals all those sis well, been absolutely fantastic Sammy coming into this environment and hitting the forms that you have done absolutely and then to have a centre back um that scores as many goals and influences the girls off the pitch as much as she does on the pitch. Grace, you've been there. But my number one for this season, Hayley West.
we, we hold on to that. You get to hold it for a bit. Um, Hayley, you're back up again. Uh, we mentioned it earlier about your, your transition into a goal-scoring player. Just to make these stats uh, present, you went from four goal contributions last year, as goals and assists combined, to 19 this year. It's almost times by five. You also had the most player of the match awards this year with six. It's been an unbelievable season, and now you've been rewarded for it. How do you feel? I'm completely over the moon. And you know what? I put it down to the cup final last year, last season, centre mid. I've been put into centre mid this season, and I don't know what's happened. So Hat trick uh, Haley, that's what happened. <laughs> Patrick Haley, um, I think Jason said it, but it's been an unbelievable year from so many players. You should be so proud to win this award because I know how hard it was for Jason to decide between, you know, genuinely so many people that could have won it. But you've won it, you deserve it, and enjoy it. Haley West, everybody! <laughs> Okay, next up, of course, is the Manager's Player of the Year for the men. Uh, I'd like to welcome up the, the men's team manager, Jay Devereaux. Okay, Devs, um, can you sum up a se this season for us? Another incredible season, along with the women winning promotion and the title. Yeah, yeah, did all right, didn't we? You did all right? Yeah. That's it, is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we win a million dollars in June, who are we signing next season? How much, am I, how much of that million <laughs> am I getting? <laughs> to, be, to be confirmed, we've got to win it first. Um, okay, last year's winner of this award was Harry Haysom. Yeah. Um, Another tough decision again. Lots of players that, that could have won this one. Can you give us some of the reasons why this player's won before you reveal the winner? Um, well, firstly, I think you're right. I probably had a similar dilemma as Jason. I'm not going to name names though because um, I can't remember half of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, on a serious note, it's a special, special group of boys uh, this year. Um, reminds me a lot of their first season in terms of personality and character. And when you talk about teams that, that win things, often the, the, the big difference is, is exactly that, the changing room and, and the togetherness and, and the personality within it. So um, there's, a, there's a number of lads that were within this, but the person I've chosen is someone who I think at, very, at vital moments of the season elevated us to another level. Um, took us to a, a places where we couldn't be catched, basically. Um, I think he's got a very, very bright future. He needs to work on his media. <laughs> he needs to stop <laughs> whacking his teammates around the head. Um, but uh, I think, as I say, a, a very, very talented lad bundles... I think we run out of things to say about him, really, yeah. in terms of what he's capable of. But uh, my, my player of the year is Jermaine Francis. Jermaine, let's go. Yeah. Uh, Jermaine, you're back up. It's the big one. Manager's player of the season. How does it feel to get the nod from Devs? Sorry, wait, wait. Nah, he's putting a straight face on me. Do you know what? Um, Thank you for like putting faith in, into me, and um, he's always told me to be the best player in the league, and I feel like I am. There you go. We're the manager's player of the season. You're on here as well, along with Haley West. Congratulations. Let's get a photo. Right, you'll be delighted to know we're very nearly done. Okay, you can go and enjoy your evenings very soon. We've got one more thing to do. As the eagle-eyed amongst you will know, every year we alternate between inducting people into our Hall of Fame or updating our all-time 11 voted for by the fans, okay? Full disclosure, this all-time 11 is a men's all-time 11 currently. But next time we do this, women are added, getting added into the vote. Women's team would have been at the club long enough to qualify, so I expect to see some very interesting votes next time. But this will be the last time it's all men's team, just based on how long we've been around, basically. The last time we voted was back in lockdown, uh, so it gives you an idea of how the team might have changed. It's All-time 11 is not necessarily the best players that have ever played for the club. It's, it's a fan vote based on the players that you've enjoyed watching the most, the players that maybe committed the most to the club, players that were the, the best relative to the level we were playing at at the time, because that's obviously changed a lot over the years. So this is voted by our Socios fan token holders, so thank you to each of you for supporting the club. Uh, we, and I'm going to remind you first of the last All-time 11 that was voted for a few years ago. So... The now outdated all-time 11 had Jamie Jackson or Jacko in goal. It had Tom Williams at left back, 
Jack Harrison and Farai Singano at centre half, Rich Beck playing at right back. It had Ricky Evans, Ross Gleed, and Scott Pollock in the middle of midfield. And it had a front three of Harry Honesty, Ryan Adams, and Dan Brown. So, that team has changed. Ooh. Uh, five, five new entries to the best all time 11 at hashtag United. I'm going to announce them one at a time. Please give them a round of applause. If your name is read out and you're here, please come to the stage. Some people obviously are not here tonight, but we still appreciate them. The goalkeeper in the now new fan voted all time 11 is still Jamie Jackson. <laughs> Jacko is coming to TST as well. We're looking forward to that. Proof of, by the way, what getting in the Hall of Fame can do for you. Jacko is coming to TST despite being retired officially. Uh, and that's what being in the Hall of Fame can mean at this club. In defence, keeping their place, but moving to left back from midfield is Ross Gleed. Ross Gleed is still in the all-time 11, deservedly so. Also keeping their place at centre-half in this team. He's here tonight. I'd like him to join me on stage. For Isingano! You guys don't know, if you've only been watching the videos for the last few years, you don't know about this guy. But he's coming back. And he's coming to TST as well. So well done, Farai, in the team once again. Well done. Alongside him, a centre-half, we have our first new entry. He's here tonight in the all-time 11 already. Harry Haysom! Come on. This is big. And alongside Harry Hayson, in that defence, also a new entry, Matt Waldridge! <laughs> okay, we'll keep going through. Moving into midfield now. Come right over the stage, please, boys. Right behind the please, over here. Uh, into the middle three, let me tell you, it's a whole new middle three. I think only one of them's here tonight. I think only one of them is here tonight, but it's a whole new middle three. Starting off in the defensive midfield position, where he hasn't played for us for a long time, but he did start his career with us there. Tom Anderson is in the midfield. <laughs> CDM. Next to Tom Anderson, we're basically going with like two number eights, really, to make the formation work. Uh, he's not here tonight. He hasn't played for us this year. But he was a mass massive servant to the club over our non-league journey. Very technically gifted player. Jesse Waller-Lassen has made it in to the all-time 11. And the other up-and-down midfielder, along with Jesse, we've just seen him on the stage recently. He's already in the best 11. This guy's got a big future. Jermaine Francis! <laughs> it's worth stating, by the way, to get into this, you have to have been at the club for over a season. Well done, Jermaine. You have to have been at the club for over a season, uh, with one exception, which I'll mention later. Going into the uh, attacking three positions, we have no new entries. It's the same front three, Harry Honesty, Ryan Adams, Dan Brown. Well done. <laughs> However, we have got uh, three new entries onto the bench of this team, and I'd like them to join us on stage as well. Um, the only exception to not having played here for a year just shows how much of an impact he's made. Probably didn't get a lot of credit this year for what the job he did, but he's ultimately come in and won us a league title on promotion. The goalkeeper on the bench is James Philp. Well done, James Philp. Please come and join us. Alongside James on the bench, we have Rich Beck, who moves from the starting lineup to the bench. Jack Harrison moves from the starting lineup to the bench. Ricky Evans is still in the mix, reserve team gaffer these days. He can join us, by the way, Ricky, if you're here. Probably doesn't want to, but I'd like you to. Please join us. Uh, another new entry on the bench is Lee Hersett. Well done, Lee Hersett. We've also got George Smith on the bench. And finally, Toby Aroma-Lerand on there. Get on it. Get on it. Get on it. Thank you again for your votes on that. To our Socius fan token holders, remember if you want to take part in regular votes and get money, can't buy opportunities at the club, uh, you need to get yourself a fan token with Socios, get, get the app. Uh, pretty soon you'll be able to get this, and, and uh, by the way, the managers are going to hate this, but you're going to get to pick the starting 11 for a friendly as a Socios fan token holder. I don't know if I've told them that yet. Um, you're going to get to vote on the new kit. The new kit coming next year is going to be fan voted. 
Socios fan token holders only. Uh, we've also got our new fan rep, Owen, is here, by the way. Round of applause for Owen, voted for by the Socios fan token holders. He's here tonight. And uh, yeah, over 18 you need to be, but you can get uh, tokens on the Socios app. That is a wrap for this season's awards. Big thanks to Fridays for having us down once again. Thank you to our staff, our coaches, our players, our volunteers, our sponsors, every single one of you for watching. We couldn't do it without you. We love you. Uh, we're not going anywhere, of course. We've got an end of the season documentary coming very soon. The guys have been working hard on. Uh, we've got our preparation and then our trip to America for TST where we could win a million dollars. And then, of course, pre-season, it all starts again. Uh, we've got the annual squad update video for all the changes. Cannot wait for it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm off to buy a new trophy cabinet. Up the tags. Come on. Yeah.